Did you know you can actually pass through a graphic card from your Proxmox to a virtual machine and use it as a desktop PC? So let's check it out. So I recently did a video on this mini PC called the Mini Forms MS01, which I'll leave a link on the top left right over here. It's not only meant to be used as a desktop, but you could also use it as a home lab. So in my case, what I have installed is Proxmox, and I am running a Windows 11 virtual machine on there with the NVIDIA 1030 GPU passed through to the VM. All right, so here are the main specs for that computer right now. So what I have is, it's called PV2, which is my second uh, vir Proxmox virtual environment. And here I have my summary. It is running 20 CPUs or it's 14 cores, 20 threads, 32 gigs of RAM. It's Intel uh, Gen i9-13900H and it's running Proxmox 8.1.4. Now I do have Windows 11 on here right now and you could see what I have is four gigs of RAM passed through to it, uh, four cores and a few other things. Now the main important things is right here, which is the PCI device and I did pass through the GPU, which in our case is the GeForce GT 1030. Now I did make it a primary GPU and all the functions pass through to it. Now the next thing you need to pass through is the USB port. Now in my case, it's USB host 2-3, which is the front USB port. And that's mainly what you need to have your keyboard and mouse pass through. So you need these two devices to function like a desktop. Now I do have everything off and I am gonna power it on in a little bit. All right, so here's the console of the VM itself. I do have the keyboard and mouse plugged into a different port just so I could still type into this. And you can see the IP address is still 94, which is the same as before. Now I am gonna log in and I am gonna show you the IP address again, which you can see it's still 94. And now I do have it plugged into the actual graphic card that I'm gonna be operating this in. So it is running off the 1030 right now, but it, if in any case, uh, you actually should be blacklisting the NVIDIA so you could actually still use the onboard graphic card. But in my case, I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna use the command line and start up the VM. So I'm gonna use QM start 100 and it's gonna take over. Windows is actually gonna take over this graphic card because I passed it through and you could see the screen changes and now I have the Proxmox BIOS. Now I am gonna move my mouse over to the front port. This way I have my keyboard and mouse properly to the connecting port. All right, so here we go. I do have my keyboard passed through. I don't think the mouse passed through properly, so I'm gonna have to check that out in a second. And no, the mouse did not pass through. So I am gonna have to sort that out real quick. And there we go, we got our mouse back. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. If I go back into my own IP address for Proxmox, now we have the Windows 11 machine that we're currently on and it's passing through to the main graphic card, which is pretty impressive. Um, I did pass through a few other things, which is the USB. I had to change it around real quick. And I go over to hardware and you can see I added the second device, which is for the mouse. Um, I technically should have added the USB hub that comes with the Raspberry Pi keyboard, but yeah, I was able to just pass through the mouse itself. Now going into this, if you want to see, if I right click over here, task manager, if you take a look at performance, it's using QEMU virtual and the memory itself is only four gigs of RAM, which is the amount we passed through. Now, just to prove that this is actually using a graphic card, uh, I could go over here and go over to device manager and you could see the device adapter output is 1030. Now, the main purpose of me trying to do this was one, you could get an actual desktop out of it and turn this into your own mini PC server. If you've seen any of those videos where people have um, two graphic card, one PC type thing, this is how they do it. They pass through a graphic card to a virtual machine and this is how they get the de desktop. Now my main purpose of this is actually just to get Photoshop working because Photoshop requires a graphic card for it to work. So now that I have Photoshop working and turned on, you could say there's no error that will pop up saying unable to find a graphic card. Now I could actually go over to edit, preferences, performance, and you can see here, it's actually detected the graphic processor, which is the 1030. And it allows me to use Photoshop the way I need to. And in my case, I could create, select, Genitive fill, house with blue roof. Oh, and there you go. And because this is running off a of virtual machine, I could actually edit anything I want over here, which will affect the machine that I'm currently on. So if I go over to here and I go into hardware and say I needed more storage, I could go into hard disk and say it's 64 gigs. I'm gonna go disk action, resize, Let's give it another 32 gigs. Resize disk, 
Now it's running, done, details. Now it should be at 96. And if I go over to disk, now I have an extra 32 gigabytes of storage that I just added in. So it's a lot of stuff that you could do through management over here on your console and you could uh, alter your actual desktop and like stuff like this, which is adding size. Now I don't have any audio device passed through, but if I did, I could actually add a PCI device and add the actual audio controller, which I didn't do before. So I don't have HDMI audio yet, but if I did, I could add this and I could get HDMI audio. There's a few other things I can do, but it's pretty impressive that it's all running under one machine that's sitting right next to me. And if I, again, wanted to add a new virtual machine, I could just click create virtual machine. Don't give it a graphic card, but I could still have access to it all locally in one machine. Anyway, that is something I just wanted to show you guys. If you guys find this very interesting, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, heck till it hurts.